What's up everyone, welcome to another episode of doing challenges in the weekly ESL tournament. Today's episode is all going to be about ghosts. We're going to do ghost cheeses, ghost opener, new ghost timing attacks. And a fun extra, apparently this cup is played on the new maps. I haven't even seen them yet, so it's going to be very cool. Let's begin. First game on ESL altitude. Now I have actually seen this map in action a few times. I think this map has a really weird feature with a gold base. Now speaking about gold guys... Our opponent here is actually Gold League. I've never had it before. This is, I think, the lowest ranked opponent I've ever played against on my channel to begin with and in these ESL Cups. I do think it's really cool. If you guys didn't know, anyone can sign up for this weekly tournament if you want to have the chance to, like, run into me. Just Google ESL Play SE2 and you can see the weekly Cups there. Now, you, ooh, there's actually a lot of cool snow on this map. I guess I haven't seen this before, but I do play on pretty high graphics because I know you guys like it. That is cool. Now, since my opponent's gold... I'm going to be trying the silliest strategy ever to, you know, give him a bigger chance of winning. And for us, it's, a, it's an, uh, a really good opportunity to try six strats that normally can't work. So what I want to do, I haven't done this even in the PFR series. I want to go for a CC first planetary rush into Ghost. That is the plan. Now let's discover the map a little bit. Check this out. This is what I was talking about. Look, there's a gold base with a watchtower. And then... Yeah, it looks it looks very cool. I agree with him. There's a gold base with a watchtower. And then what you're supposed to do to take it is kill this tower and it collapses on the watchtower and kills it, basically. Um, that's what I think it is. There might be... Wait, are we getting cannon rush? I, I'm the one doing a rush here, man. <laughs> Back off. This is my territory. Now, let me just quickly check for a pylon. Okay, maybe he's just chilling over there. He, uh, he's not going to realize I'm playing CC first. He probably thinks this is a straight up proxy 2 Rex. Um, and I just really hope he doesn't... Imagine if he built a pylon there or something. Would he see that? That would be tragic. I'm going to go for the barracks. Do I go, need to go for a double gas? Hmm, I've never done this build before, guys. A CC first planetary rush. I need 150 gas to make that a PF. I actually do need a double gas. Okay, I didn't keep that in mind at all. That probably would have been, uh, you know, smart to figure out beforehand. Now... I think I already have to make the eBay. Let's see. Yeah, the, the problem is... He needs to not block it with a work. And normally I have a distraction force, right? Normally I have some Reapers and Hellions. Marines and Tanks. Kind of blocking him off right now. He could put an S or a probe under it. And it wouldn't be able to land. And that's it. Which is pretty tragic. So, yeah. We're going to see. I do have one SCP available to repair. And I'm just going to fly straight up into his main. eBay is going to finish in 15 seconds there. Let's get um, an orbital. I don't think... Did I already get a Ghost Academy? I think I have enough gas. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to have enough gas. Okay, YOLO. This might be the most accidentally optimized build ever. Okay. Oh, no. He was always he was almost about to turn, but now he does fight my command center. He's actually walled here. Okay, let's see what he's going to do. I mean, at this point, he knows what's up most likely. My SCV is here to distracting, and I'm just going to pop it down right there. He's A-moving on my SCV right now, which is not what he needs to be blocking. The SCV is actually distracting him enough. Okay, it's going to land. He's trying to block it now. Okay, there we go. Planetary is going to come in action here. And this is a game, I, I can tell you guys this. I was not expecting to play a game like this in the ESL Cup, okay? But here we go. I'm trying to distract these workers from killing the, the planetary. Because if he would attack it with everything, he would probably kill it. But for now, this is about 10 workers chasing my SUV instead. Obviously, a repair would be nice. Oh, I could have dropped a mule. Oh, that would have been so much better if I dropped a mule to repair that. Wait, he's attacking it. It might finish. No, it doesn't look like it's going to finish. Okay, I'm going to fly it away and try to repair it with these SUVs over here. And then I'll accompany it with my ghost for the next try. I'm going to get cloak for the ghost as well. Probably try to expand here. And if it was two stalkers, this would die. But now it's going to survive and we're going to get another shot at this. I can always try to land it here instead. Or maybe actually I can only put it there. That's the only place I can put it. Some SUVs are going to reach. I'm going to try to expand behind it as well. Um, do I need anything else? I mean, realistically... Go. I need to stop rallying, by the way. I think three SUVs is more than enough. I only wanted to send two. Um, ghosts are pretty bad against stalkers. So, you know, if I... Oh, that's the fourth one as well. If I go across with my ghost and I don't have cloak yet, I'm just going to die to a few stalkers, which would be uh, a massive shame, of course. Now, if I want to get this planetary up, I'll have to accompany it with these SUVs. I think I'm actually just going to try fly it already. Maybe he won't notice. I'm going to drop like a little bit of an EMP there. There we go. Uh, I'm probably going to scare him off. No, he's actually very brave. Okay, he's going for it. I mean, <laughs> excuse me. Now those are EMP'd. My ghosts are actually going to win, which is nice. And my cloak is going to finish relatively soon. He's making a Stargate and a Robo facility both. He's very tech-orientated. Let me get a snipe off on that Zealot. Very pleasant that you can do that. 
I'll do another EMP. Make sure to micro this one so he can't target it. There we go. He's trying. Oh, it's actually a wall. I didn't realize that was a wall. And now that stalker's gonna die as well. Beautiful. My CC. Oh, he doesn't have a place to land. Oh, that is rough. It's time to get my ghost across. I'm actually gonna put it down on this ramp. Um, try to expand behind it, like I said. You can go right here. I'm not sure if my ghosts are gonna be in time, though, but we'll see. He is making a... Is that a void ray? I thought it was a void ray. Yeah, I think these SUVs, I'm gonna give one repair. And then I'm gonna run off. Because he's gonna start chasing them. Then I can come into the natural. I even have an EMP available for the battery. Which is very, very nice. Or do I need to back off a little bit. These are very low HP, by the way. Let's see, now I got cloak. And now I'm gonna get on top here. Of these stalkers. Okay, he might kill that planetary though, which is very unfortunate. Let's see, can I get a repair off? That would be beautiful. I mean, at least I'm killing a lot of workers for this, which is nice. It is gonna fit. I need one shot. No, not quite gonna get one shot off here, and I'm gonna have to transition. Um, I don't think he has detection here, which is nice. Let's see, because I can just kill that actually. If he's gonna chase me, I might be able to. Okay, there he goes, backing off. Now we're gonna get some extra, uh, you know, gases so I can actually afford ghost. I do want to go for round number two of the planetary rush, though. Keep in mind, I, uh, you know, this is a tournament. I'm not going to lose on purpose, obviously, but uh, I like to make it as fair and fun as possible. So far, it's been a pretty epic game. Shout out to him for defending that, by the way. Like, really well done. And now, did I get a factory yet? I don't think so. It's time to get the real weapons here, guys. We're going to go for a nuke. Nuke with the planetary rush. If he defends both of those, then he's an actual hero. Nice strategy. Thanks. That was very nice of him. Appreciate that. Uh, I like it when you guys appreciate my strategy. Thank you very much, Mi Mihaita. I think uh, is his name. I'm not sure if I can actually afford all these ghosts, though. Like, this is a lot of freaking gas that I need. Especially if I want to get a nuke as well. I could technically fly this one all the way across the map. And then... What if I nuke here? And put the planetary in the main. I feel like e either of those is going to do a fantastic amount of damage. For me, it doesn't really matter which one it is, because the PF rush for me here is an extra. You know, this episode is about doing ghost rushes and stuff. Uh, so I guess we'll see. It's going to take me about a, <laughs> a minute and a half to arrive there, though. Which is a little bit unfortunate, but it's okay. So nuke number one is on the way. He has both a robo and a stargate, so he does have all the options for detection necessary. Not quite sure if he's going to be able to use them effectively. Though an oracle can get EMP'd and sniped. Uh, an observer can get scanned. And here we go. There's no detection here, seems like. Oh, there's... That's exactly what I'm talking about. There we go. He wasn't able to save that. Oh, he does another one. Let me kill that real quick. There we go. Another EMP. Does he have another observer? I mean, he did kill a good amount of my ghost already. I, I feel like my CC was just a massive bait here, by the way. Like, I think he actually came after the CC. And that didn't go so well for him. There is something in my main. Good thing I have a turret there. Oh, that's painful for him. Can always get an EMP off. There we go. I'm always afraid I miss those EMPs, by the way. EMPing air units is kind of scary if there's only one target. I usually miss the observers, I feel like. Okay, let's see. This one is going to go into the main here. And then I'll just get the natural with this ghost. Do need to make sure to snipe the observer once again, though. Let's see. I don't see an observer yet. Can I nuke this from here? Is that like a... Okay, that's, that's not bad, actually. Okay, here we go. Do I need more upgrades? I could get plus one armor. Um, I need some more gases, too. I actually can't afford everything I'm doing right now. Let's get some more nukes out as well. Is that gonna hit? No. I mean, it does almost kill the... Wait, where did the army even go? It, it's, it's just gone. Okay, he's going for the command center. This is massive. I mean, he can kill that, but he's gonna lose every single probe for it. This is what I meant. I don't really care which one of the two things does the damage. In this case, he's gonna let the ghost do the damage, which is nice. He does have an observer there. There we go. Quick EMP to reveal that. Uh, and that's gonna be painful for him. Not sure if he has enough money or another observer on the way, rather. Let's get up on this high ground over here. Okay, I don't see the observer right now. Or maybe, no, I just didn't have a cloak on that one ghost. Here we go, let's try to EMP, let's try to get this PF alive. He really wants to go for the PF, but I want this PF to stay alive at this point. We've gotten so far, we've tried so hard, and I think we have finally dealt with him. Though, for real though, shout out. Oh, let me try to get a repair on that. Shout out to him for defending this. This is Gold League, guys, and I think it was insanely impressive that he could live for that long. Like, really, well done to him, fantastic. Game two. Oh, that's beautiful, I didn't even see I was going for that. He waited for it. This guy is such a legend. He waited for the nuke to land for the highlight. That is absolutely beautiful. Had one orc and one observer left. Now game two. I'm going to do a little bit more of a brutal strategy. But this was a very fun experiment. CC first planetary rush into the ghost. Let's go for game number two. All right. Map two on royal blood. 
Once again, a map I don't know, but looks pretty cool as well. I do really like new maps, by the way. I think a lot of people are always afraid uh, when there's new maps on the ladder and stuff. These are not yet left on the ladder, by the way. They're only in tournaments. Uh, they are going to be on the ladder soon, I think. But I just really love the feeling of figuring out a new map. Like, if a map has been in a map pool for six months, typically they're just completely figured out. You know what race they're good for, what strategies are optimal on that map. And as you guys know from my channel... Uh, I do not want to go for the optimal strategy most of the time. So for me, it's all right. But I think for the enjoyment of watching and playing, it's really important that there's new maps. Now, let's see. Uh, this map, looking at the mini map, looks pretty open. It does have a bunch of chokes all around. A little bit of rocks here. I would say medium-sized chokes. There's ramps, but you can't quite cover them with, like, one small wall or... Um, yeah, you know, one barracks and one depot kind of thing. Like, you really need... This is like a six depot wall, I believe, or seven. So you're really gonna have to spend a lot of time walling those off. Middle of the map looks a little bit more choky. I would say the middle of the map looks pretty nice for Terran fights. You can, uh, you know, make use of those chokes against Zerg armies, for example. Let's see if there's any really... Oh, this is a really nasty siege position, by the way, into the main base. Though, probably it doesn't really reach far enough to make uh, a little... Oh, this one, though. You can shoot the gas from here. Okay, I'm just saying, guys. Don't go too hard on your ladder opponents when this map comes out, but killing the gas from here seems pretty nice. Um, though it doesn't seem like there's any absolutely amazing tank spots. It's also another map that's great for hidden expansions, because as you can see, the path, the scouting path will show you this. Well, this one actually may, might be a little bit out of vision here, uh, but all right. Hidden expansion, by the way, if you guys didn't know, it's a strategy that I really like. And I'm sad that you'd never see it at pro level. Um, I mean, I did lose to a hidden expansion one time, but besides that one time, we forget about that. We forget about that. You don't really see it in pro level a lot. And I think it's a strategy that could work. What sucks for me, however, uh, is that hidden expansions kind of suck with Terran in particular. And the main reason is that even if the, you get away with it, Terran is such a momentum-based race, you always want to be doing damage. A hidden expansion, your eco is going to be better, but you're going to lose all of the momentum, and it's not really the dynamic you want with Terran. I think with Protoss, it's a lot better. Um, I wish it was better with Terran, because then I would use it all the time. Maybe I should actually... Wait! Guys, that is... You know, <laughs> I'm just thinking, I'm going to make ghosts, by the way, I just want to say, don't worry about it. I was just thinking about it, but I, I keep thinking, what ESL Cup challenge should I do next? Because at this point, I already have a bunch, uh, and it's kind of hard for me to come up with new cool ideas now I'm doing the ghost. But I could totally do a hidden basis episode. The thing is, if you hidden base multiple times in a freaking best of three... They're gonna find you after the first game. Uh, but I still think it's a really funny idea. You can do a little different versions with it too. You could do like a cool Battlecruiser version. You know that maps... Actually, yeah, this is a different map pool, right? But there's maps with gold bases. Maybe even with rich gases. So you never know on which maps you can actually use hidden bases. But you can use them for different purposes. So that would be fantastic. Now let me just make some units to... Safeguard my entrance against this two gate. And then I think I'm gonna go for... A ghost drop sounds pretty nice. Maybe like a cloak ghost drop. Try to get two probes here and then dip before the stalkers come back. I do want to make sure he's not doing anything sneaky. Uh, my, you know, my biggest fear... Well, that's actually totally not true. Not my biggest fear. But something that I, I, I have been afraid of in the past. Is if I play those early rounds. And I play a person that's slowly, uh, slightly lower ranked. That you just die to like DTs walking into your base, you know, because you didn't make any detection. So I'm just going to make hella sure it's not DTs. And then I'm going to set myself up for an absolutely brutal ghost drop. And let's get this. That is... Well, I can put my factory on it. I guess it's a pretty good mind game. So far, doesn't seem like he's doing anything crazy. I'm going to be able to get my ghost up, which is really nice. Even though it costs a lot of gas. This mine is going to kill at least a zealot. Put it, I'm putting one dollar on it right now. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying, you know, who's taking the bet with me. But I'm putting one dollar that that mine kills one zealot. Oh, it's an adept. Oh, that's even better. Now I, now you guys all owe me five dollars. That's how it works, right? Well, at least you can subscribe and like the video. I guess that works as well. Now, how long does Cloak actually... You know, I could get Cloak. Ghost build, 29 seconds. Wait, this build might actually work out somehow. That's ridiculous. This is really not the most streamlined build I've ever done. Um, at least that's what I thought, but it's gonna work out pretty nicely. Now, a medivac takes one second less to build than a ghost, apparently. So I make the medivac first. At most, that's, yeah, literally gonna save me one second. But you guys know me, I like to optimize my build orders. And how is this actually gonna be a, a freaking efficient... Look at the resource. How is this an efficient four cloaked ghost drop with a mine and a decent defense? Well, I guess I just... That's just what I do at this point. I figure out builds on accident. That's a nice, uh, nice problem to have. Now, how can I finish... Actually, I should go for a nuke instantly. 
Too bad Cloak is still going to take a while. And my second ghost is going to be a little bit late, but that's all right. Now I'm going to scout with my mine here. One, one tip I always like to give Terran players is that Terran usually scout... Oh, that's a little stalkers. That's pretty good against my ghost. I think I'm going to have to snipe uh, detection here. Uh, one tip that's very important for Terran players always is that the other races scout with scouting units. Terran scouts by attacking. So the way you attack is like by... Or the way you scout is by attacking with Hellions. It shows you the gases. Or sending Reapers into the main. You see what the tech building is. You do a with a mind drop. You see exactly how many probes your opponent has, etc. That's how a Terran scouts. So in this case, all I had was a with a mind. So the with a mind was my scout, which I guess, you know, is fine. Now, I really hope he does not have Blink and a Robo. Because else this drop is going to be a little bit sad. Oh, he does have a Robo. So I'm going to have to use my snipes here. There we go. Gonna get a nuke as well. Is there an observer here? I haven't seen an observer yet. I wonder if I could kill this pylon. Let's see, can I kill that in time? No, the observer's there. Okay, he's, he sieged it, and now it's dead. There we go. And then I'm gonna depower this robo, unpower. Not quite sure what the right word is, actually. And then, oh, he has another observer. Okay, watch this. I'm just gonna scan it preemptively. And Guan shot it. Oh, that is brutal. Oh, <laughs> poor guy. That's really sick. I saw the recall. I scanned it. There it is. GG. Told you guys it was going to be a little bit more brutal. Uh, but yeah, there we go. I mean, is that a fake GG? He's still moving his units around. Guys, we've been tricked. This is not This is not what a normal GG looks like. Uh, he's putting the probes in his prism, so I can't kill them. This is a pretty good move. All right, where are you at? I think we're going to have to go uh, serious on this. There we go. You asked for it, buddy. Well, you guys saw it. It wasn't on me. He fake GG'd me, okay? That's... Sc absolutely scandalous. Now he's still running around. I wonder if he's gonna wait until I kill literally all of his pros. There you go. I was hoping this would kill uh, the observer spawning, but I guess not. I mean, waiting until the energy runs out, I guess could work. But if you don't have any pros left, you're probably not gonna be super satisfied with the results here. Here, my army of reinforcements is coming. Let me EMP that battery so it doesn't heal the guys up here. There we go. Now, yeah, this guy's a lot. Actually, I'm starting to wonder because if you remember in the last game. He, uh, he typed GG and then waited for the nuke to land, which I thought was a Chad move. But now I'm just not sure if he actually just doesn't like leaving the game. It's probably more likely. I got more ghosts coming in. If he doesn't leave after I kill those stalkers, I'll fast forward. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, there we go. No GG. Just kidding. He GG two minutes ago already. Anyway, that was our warm-up game. We had some fun. And now it's time to start a ghost making ghosts against Grandmaster opponents. Let's go. Series number two of the day, and it's already getting spicy because we are playing against a mysterious Chinese Zerg that I've never heard of before, that just 2 0 a Grandmaster Terran before us. And I'm gonna have to beat him with Ghost Builds. However, I do think Ghost Builds are pretty fun. Keep in mind, this is not Ghost only to Grandmaster. I can make other units too. And I have some really cool Ghost Builds in mind. I think the first one I wanna try is just a classic Hellion Ghost attack, trying to snipe the Queens over and over. I, I do have some even more special builds than that with Ghost against Zurich, but for now, um, yeah, I guess we'll just have to go over that one and then we build from there. I have no idea how good this is. I have no idea how he plays. It's all gonna be pretty exciting. Now, if you look at the map real quick, it's a very, uh, you know, nature-based map, I guess I want to say. There's rocks here. This third, this is a ramp. It's actually kind of hard to see, but that is a ramp. Kind of trying to figure out where I can take the bases. This area above my natural... Let me take a guess. This area above my natural is pretty open, and I don't like that. Because if I have my natural here, my third there, what's going to happen is you can just make a massive concave and just attack directly into my natural, and it's a very awkward angle to defend. So, even though it looks insane, I might rather want to take this space up here, like, vertically. Uh, because then it might not be as awkward to defend. That also looks awkward, though. I don't know. I think I may have been tricked, to be honest, guys. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened. So, I thought it was pretty funny. This guy messaged me. Uh, or no, actually, I messaged him, and we started vetoing. And he said, I haven't played the new maps. Do you want to skip vetoing and just choose one, and then you choose one? And I'm like, yeah, why not? You know, I, I was just going to choose maps that I didn't play in the first series because it's my first time playing this. But this map looks really tough to defend on. So I wonder if this guy just like <laughs> tricked me and put me on an Omega Zerg map. That would be kind of funny. Uh, you know, respect if he pulled that off. Well, it's, it's a little bit of a cheesy play, right? It's a little bit of a cheesy outgame play, but it's all right. There's a little bit of a smoke there. Black smoke when I uh, put down that command center. It's a cool effect. The things you notice when you play on higher graphics, guys, it's cool. Most pros, actually, if you guys don't notice, most pros play on low almost everything. I used to play like that too until I went into content and I realized I didn't want to hurt your eyes as much. 
uh, as I used to do on my stream when I would just play on my low graphics. So now I completely got used to playing like this. But most people play on low. And you don't actually get to notice the effects on the map. But now I do. I'm going to try to deny this Overlord. And... I do have to say, the Chinese players do have a little bit of a reputation of being a little bit cheesy. Uh, more than being cheesy, they always have their own meta. So they play off-meta builds. Uh, they play a little bit different. So I think I'm going to need to scout extra well here. I don't even know if this guy likes to take third bases, for example, right? It's, uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit tricky here. So there's no third here. This would actually be a surprising third base to take. So maybe he's actually on two base. Okay, he's taking that one. I mean, interesting. I mean, I've never seen a game on this map before. So maybe that's normal. Maybe that's what all the Zergs have been doing. Where's the... Oh, here it is. I couldn't even see the Re Reaper jump up spot there. But it was right there. Right, he's defending the Reaper jump in with Queens. Well done by him. And I guess it's time to add a Ghost Academy now. I added it a little bit late. Because I was just trying to figure out what he was doing so much. Maybe I'll go for a Starport here. No, I'm actually just going to go for the, the Tech Lab. It's all good. I think Ghost Academy, yeah, Ghost Academy is built pretty fast. So if anything, I got like a five second delay or something. Uh, but it's all good. It's not going to impact me that much. Now maybe I can kill that tumor. It's really hard to target the tumors next to the queen. But there I got it perfectly twice, which is very nice. I have to admit, more often than not, I'll target the queen instead of the creep tumor. And it's a little bit of a disaster. But uh, here we got it. It made me look a little bit good. So that's nice. Now I could technically get Cloak with this. The reason why I don't really like Cloak usually... Is because it costs energy to activate it, meaning you have less snipes, right? And with this strategy, I basically want to go for snipes. The way it works with Heli and Ghost, actually pretty simple. So, but it's a bit of a micro dance. So, what you do is a queen barely survives one snipe. So, you want to hit it with with a Heli once, or maybe twice, or maybe once with the Reaper. I think all of those work, and then you want to snipe it. So, they don't want to transfuse it because it's only missing five HP. Right? Uh, and you pretty much kill it instantly that way. So he's going to scout me now. I'm going to go across. Uh, but since I am playing centered on Ghost this episode, I was considering getting Cloak, but I think I'm not going to do it in the end. Probably just go for a Starport here. Let's see if I can snipe the first Queen. Watch it. So I'm going to target it with the Hellions. And then... Oh, he actually moved it away instantly. Well done. He might have a lot of Links up there. I'm just going to go up here first. See if I can fight the Links. Yeah, exactly. Okay, there we go. That one is damaged. And we're going to get a snipe off really fast. And this was all in all a fantastic trade. I can go for another queen here. Let's do a little bit of damage with the Hellions. There we go. And we got a snipe off. That's beautiful. And this way I can just keep getting maximum efficiency. Well, macroing at home. Well, the macro at the home part might depend on how well I'm playing today. But the intention is there, guys. Let's put it that way. I think we can go with a Liberator behind this. I've never done this follow up before actually with a Liberator. It does seem pretty cool. So now I have three ghosts out already. My army is getting pretty sizable. Oh, I'm actually just going to kill this. I wasn't intending to kill it, but then I realized it was low HP. Probably because my, my Marine did not kill that, actually. I thought it was the Ghost that was hitting it, but it was the Marine that was supposed to kill it, and it just didn't. There's good. It's going to be another Queen going down. A little bit of damage. Oh, what? It walked out of range. Oh, right. Wait, did it change that? Oh, yeah. You can actually walk out of range now. Huh? This is on the new patch. Guys, I completely forgot about that patch note. And did that did kind of trip me up a little bit. Oh, no. Did I just get patched out of the game? Did you guys see that? I completely forgot that was going to happen. Oh my goodness. You can now actually escape snipe. And the confusion that that cost me. Or caused me. Made me lose that entire battle. And that is pretty rough. We're now going to play from massively behind. But maybe our follow up that is going to be decent enough. But oh man. That is actually pretty easy to run away from. I didn't realize that. I can imagine uh, all the other Terrans are going to be pretty upset at that change. Because that did not look pleasant. Having the Queen just waddle away from my snipe. Let's try to get a Liberator Siege here. Um, yeah, he has a lot of drones too. Ooh, this is not looking wonderful, guys. I have to say. Maybe I can get a decent amount of damage. Let's target the drones instead. Got two more drones there. That's pretty nice. Try to saturate my third base. All in all, my follow-up looks pretty good. Okay, like I know it's been a bit of a disaster. But the follow-up looks pretty good. He has a... Ooh, infestation pit already. Okay, this is worse than I thought. He might be building a hive right now. And I'm here taking my third base on the 75 supply. That is... Yeah, well, I'll try to climb out of it. I do have to say one thing. Um, I mean, it's not really my style to play like that. So for me, it's not that big of a deal. Normally, Terran gets out of holes like this by playing late game. With that snipe nerf, I actually don't know if that's a possibility anymore. I don't think Terran is going to be able to play late game from behind like it was before. 
Hmm. I mean, I guess we're going to see. Oh, actually, we're not going to see it because ideally I don't get stuck in a long late game. I like to keep my games active, but uh, I mean, I have a little bit of a racked out group of units here. Not exactly going to be the most efficient attack. What is this? Four Hellions, a tank, three Ghosts, three Marines and a Liberator. Guys, do not try this army composition at home, okay? I, I, I know watching the videos is fun and all that, but this one, <laughs> maybe, maybe shouldn't be copying this one, all right? Now I'm going to get Combat Shield... This, you know, the bases are pretty pushable on this map. I imagine he's taking down these rocks. If he doesn't take down the rocks, we do have a very strong push. Um, should I go for a fourth command center? I think since he's so far ahead, I'm just going to try adding on more barracks and going for the kill here. Going for the late game, like I said, in this position. Probably just not the brightest idea. Let's see if the, the high... Oh, wait, the lair is here then. Oh, that's actually unfortunate. I kind of just um, assumed I saw the lair here. Uh, later on, but I actually didn't. So the lair is there, and now I don't know if there's a hive. I did see a few units pop up. That was funny. Me scanning there made him think I was about to drop there or something, which makes a lot of sense. That's good reactions by him. But I was really just uh, just peeping a little bit, like seeing what's going on here. So we're gonna get one one. Um, I do have four hellbats and a couple ghosts. Not quite sure what the ghosts are gonna be useful for in this push. Like maybe I c he can tank with queens, because if he tanks with the queens, I can snipe them. Yeah, there's an overlord very well positioned there. Maybe I should go for a double gas and go for a few more uh, tanks as well. Get an extra factory out. That could be pretty nice. Let's see if he has this fifth base over here. He does have this fifth base. Kind of what I expected. And now, let's see. I'm going to keep these in the back and the ghost as well. He, he didn't make bailings yet. Okay, there might be super fast ultras on the way or something. If he doesn't have bailings at this point, then I don't know what he really has been doing. Do some splits. Not the best splits ever. Yeah, he already has the Vipers out. Now I do kind of wish I had Cloak. Okay. He's going for it. See, he doesn't have a lot of bailings, actually. This is not the strongest army I've ever seen. In fact, this army is even getting cursed. Where are the... There was like two bailings I saw, guys. Did he just mess this up completely by just being so greedy and refusing to make any bailings? He did kill the rocks, and that's a good move. But now it's going to be good for me because I can actually kind of get in here uh, with my reinforcements faster. Let's see. He's making a lot of bailings now. He realized he's made a massive mistake. I'm going to try to kill those vipers with the snipes. They do actually go off, which is fantastic. A little bit of splitties to be done. And I don't know what he did, guys, but he definitely messed it up. And now it looks like we're winning all of a sudden. Just going to have to do some final splits here. Uh, actually, going to keep my army together. That looks like one way to lose. The best thing about this build, by the way... Is that if I wanted to make ghosts for the late game, I actually just could make them already. So he did go for the ultras, and that's what I was talking about. Because um, now I do have the ghost, and I can actually snipe the ultra. Look how low HP it already is, and it died. The ghosts are actually carrying me right now, guys, and I didn't expect that to happen in this weird-ass tank attack that I'm doing. Let's do a little bit of splitties. There we go. Good enough for sure. He might have another ultra on the way, and then I can't kill it, but I think I can kill his economy here. He needs ultras right now or he's going to lose this base and the game, I think. But that one thing could be an ultra list. There we go. GG. He was so greedy. And that saved our asses because we should have been dead. Guys, this was his seventh base. I'm on three bases. You, oh my god. I, I don't think I've ever seen this before, guys. He had Adrenal Glands, which is a Hive upgrade, before 2-2. That is actual insanity how greedy was he exactly seven when, when did i attack about here right a little bit later he had six bases here high finish adrenal gland building ultralist cavern 1000 minerals in the bank and only six bailies look at my army guys my army is not impressive this is 30 where he's without combat shields if he makes 40 bailings instead of all the stuff he a moves me and i'm dead but he was just so greedy i do have to say if i went to the late game here like i said it was a bad idea i would have gotten absolutely crushed by his greed but for now i'm gonna be thankful for this gift to win game number one and i'm gonna keep it going Game number two is going to be on Neo Humanity. Now, like I told you guys, he chose the first map. I chose this one. And I chose it at completely random. Because I just want to play maps that I haven't played yet. So far, we've played Royal Blood. The last one was called Babylon, I think. And then the first one I played was called Altitude. So we have four maps left. This is the fourth one, Neo Humanity. Looks very bright, actually. 
Uh, I mean, I do have a pretty high gamma. I'm not sure if it quite translates in the video, but it's probably quite bright for you as well. And by looking at the bracket officially on Wikipedia, I figured out who it was. My opponent's actually pro Zerg player Seoki. That explains how he was able to crush a Grandmaster Terran 2-0 uh, in the first round. Now, he's definitely playing on a lot of ping, and that contributes to my uh, success in the fights as well. Now, this map looks... What is this bait? This map, this map looks very interesting, I have to say. There is... Oh, these are gold. Oh my goodness. Okay. I've never seen this before. I For a second, I thought... I skimmed it quickly, right? At the start of the game, the first few seconds. In my head, this was a gold base and these were normal mineral blockers. I've never seen gold mineral blockers before. Well, at least you're going to get rewarded for mining out the, the path, right? So that's pretty nice. But what's crazy here is that there's a base in the freaking middle. Like, imagine getting surrounded on this base. That's going to be painful, right? Um, and then there's a few bases on the right side too. These bases are pretty covered. This base is pretty open. I guess you could cover this base from the back here with a few siege tanks. I'm mostly just trying to theorize and maybe help you guys find some cool strategies once you get to play these maps. Or if you sign up for the next ESL Cup, of course, and get to play them here yourself. Uh, and hopefully... I mean, I'm not sure how he can use that against your opponent as a Terran, really. Because, like, if, imagine if he takes his base. Trust me, I would love to siege here, but that's his base. So, like, that's not going to happen, you know. I would have to really take some uh, some absolute loops to get there. I would have to kill his third first and then siege his fourth from behind. Probably not the most effective strategy ever. Now, my strategy last game did work pretty well until I got absolutely bamboozled by the new snipe change. I think we're going to try a similar opener. It was very solid. Maybe I'll try a different follow-up, try to go into mech or something instead. Uh, but that was actually pretty cool. I enjoyed it. This map is a little bit more open. Maybe I'll get some more snipes. And what I noticed, guys, is that he did not go for bailings against the ghost. So what I could do is add an armory, so when he does go for the surround, I can reactively morph all my Hellions into Hellbats and be really good against the Zorkling surround. Now, you usually don't want to do that reactively, but since I have a good read on his build, it's a probably it's probably a pretty good idea. Now, his drone is moving out too late. Oh no, he's not going to be able to take a third base. That's a mistake from him. Or a genius mind game, of course. That could be the case. Trying to pretend he wants to take a third base, but he actually doesn't. That sounds like the kind of thing I would do, so respect, you know. Let's get the Ghost Academy instantly this time. Let's see if we can deny the Creep Tumor. Okay, can I target that? It's so hard to click on that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm not going to go for it. That I think I could have gotten it, but I would have lost the Reaper for it. And that's uh, not worth it to me. Don't want to sacrifice my Golden Boy, the Reaper. I only make one each game. Unless I play 24 Rex Reaper against the World Champion. You know, just your thermal things. But I usually only make one every game. It's the Golden Boy and I gotta take care of him, right? So, I'm not gonna sacrifice him for just the Creep Tumor. Now, at this point, he probably has taken this base over here. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm gonna try to jump in the main. It's a, it's a very late third. Even though it looked like he wanted to take it earlier, it's still gonna be pretty smart to scout here. Doesn't have a particular amount of gas mine. It's a little bit more than usual, but uh, in the end, it's nothing crazy. Maybe we can go around. Okay, looks completely normal to me. Now, that was a very valuable scout. Didn't look like anything crazy was going on. Now, this one looks weird. Because this is a low ground. Normally, this is like a pillar, but this is... Wait, is there even an overlord pillar here? Can you park an overlord on this map anywhere? Maybe not. I mean, I'm a big fan of that. I freaking hate Overlord Pillars. Don't you guys hate that feeling of an Overlord just, like, sitting there, just, like, spying on your natural all the time? Like, I think it's horrible. So I'm very happy to see that there might not be an Overlord Pillar on this map. Uh, that was a very good Overlord impression, by the way, I know. And let's try to get across the map, see what he's up to over there. I don't want to lose these Hellions because I want to use them with my Ghost, just like the last time. I'm actually going to save for two Ghosts. Uh, oh, well, he's already scouting me. Then I might as well go. I could snipe it too. I was going to say, I'm going to save for two goes to have a little bit more of a surprise. Okay, now he's seen me to begin with, uh, so we can just go for it instantly. Try to get this base. Uh, I do have an armory now, which that Overlord is going to see. That is unfortunate. Now he might reactively make a baiting nest. Um, and that's going to be pretty good against the Hellbats here. Let's see. Is my ghost coming in yet? I need to make sure. Okay, there we go. He's not going to be running. Okay, if he ran away from that too, I would have been a little bit upset. So he's making a spine crawler. So what I need to do here is transition, first of all. I'm still going to continue with the attack. I just want to make sure to not turn this into an all-in. Because if it's an all-in, um, it's going to be pretty easily held by that spine crawler. Let's get that one, too. There we go. Two more queens down. Let's send my final ghost across the map. And then this time I'm going to go for mech play instead of bio. 
So I'm gonna add a few more gases already. And that way I try to do two different follow-ups centered around this ghost opening. This is, if, as you guys can see, I think you probably agree, this is one of the most fun openers you can do. It's not always as efficient because, you know, you're investing a lot just to snipe a few queens and stuff. But again, some people it works perfectly and it is quite fun to do. See, another ghost there, or another queen rather. Yeah, like you said, he had Bane now. Where's the other ghost? Oh, it is there already. Okay, it looked like it wasn't. So I get two extra factories now. Um, oh, he does have a bunch of Zerklings here. That's going to be perfectly fine for me, actually. There we go. Snipe that one. And then we're going to do some splitties here, which is going to work just fine, I think. There we go. Decent enough splitties. My wall is still alive. He lost all of those Zerklings, actually. Now that's going to run away. Yeah. Oh, he didn't. Okay. So maybe the last queen was just in quite literally the perfect range to one away. That's possible. So that queen is dead. And if I actually killed all of those Zerklings, that is a massive advantage for us. Because he lost so many units there. Let's try to go for... I'm actually going to get plus one. And then later on, I'll switch towards a double armory setup. Keep in mind, I'm also still making Ghost. Which, you know, it's pretty gas expensive. Don't think I want to spend all my gas on the double armory already. I'm just going to go make tanks. Let's get these as well. Does he have a lot more left? Just gonna park these two right there. I can actually go in here now. Um, get two extra tech labs. I might even be able to get that. That would be insane. If I can get a hatchery with this arm. He's making another one here. But his third might not even stay up. Yeah, so he's going for a counter attack. Actually, rather than heading across on accident. A little bit annoying. Okay, let's just make sure I don't die. Uh, get a few snipes off on the queens. Beautiful. Now, he is gonna bust me here, looks like. But it's not that convincing of a bust so i don't think i'm gonna lose everything here that's the most important part i'll run away for a sec but i think that's about all i have to do i'm gonna use my one heli in here to clean this up and then i'll get back to mining hope these two bailings don't you know blow up my entire existence that'd be pretty nice okay they're not fantastic let's get a snipe on that not sure if the snipe there is useful because he can just run away and it's gonna stay alive on one hp probably be transfused Better resaturate this mineral line here. Um, and I feel like I have a pretty good setup going, right? Two factories, or, or two extra factories rather. Gonna make a second armory as well. Still making ghosts. Might have that base beyond the gold. But oh, that's a few bailings I can kill. Let's see. Oh, he's taking it now. You yeah, have to run away from that 100%. I would lose every single unit there. Or every single SCV rather. SCVs are also units, I suppose. But kind of had more army units in mind when I said that. I the mine from this perfectly. He's going to kill the CC. Or he's going to try to kill the CC. So I need to lift it. That's a mistake I actually make pretty frequently, by the way. It's a little bit of an embarrassing mistake. But it happens a lot where I think... They're not going to be silly enough to try and target down the command center with freaking Zerglings, right? They always do. And I've definitely lost the command center to just Zerglings a, a good few times. Okay, let's do some splitties here. I didn't get Cloak. So these ghosts are forfeit. But they have really delivered, I think, this game. I'm massively ahead. Unless he has another base that I haven't found. Uh, but I think we should be good on that front. I have four siege tanks already. Gonna try to split them pretty well here. Maybe I can do a, a timing with like 10 tanks or so. Maybe if uh, plus 2-1 finishes. I, I can only imagine he's trying to attack me right now. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. There we go. Trying to attack me. I can just split these. Tanks are going to kill these bailings so fast. That did absolutely nothing. Uh, oh, well, I did get, kill that tank at the end. It's a little bit of four. I would have loved the tank to stay alive. That's a little bit of damage, but uh, it's all good. That's... I don't know how many bailings that was. I want to say it was about 30, which obviously is worth more than a few tanks in Hellbath that I lost. Trying to go again. Not quite yet. Might be good to start Cloak now. No upgrades on those. I have better upgrades with mech units than he had on the Zerklings. That's that's when you know you're vibing, guys. Trust me. That's when you know you're absolutely vibing. He's trying to go again. I'm actually going to unseed these to not die to the splash. That's a nice move. Um, I kind of expected him to surrender after that. Maybe he has more than I thought. But that seemed like it was a pretty brutal blow to his uh, winning chances. Let's see. Base is still being taken. My 2-1 is on the way. Probably get a, an engineering beta so I don't die to like 10 random mutas. Five ghosts. Five ghosts can probably do decently against 10 mutas. Keep in mind though, I need to remember this. I'm, I'm actually going to forget this a bunch of times. But the mutas can fly away now from the freaking snipes, right? And relatively easily too, probably. Because if a queen can escape a snipe, a mutalisk should definitely be able to escape a snipe, I would say. That seems fair enough. Queens are quite slow. Mutalisks are very, very, very speedy. 
Now, I'm gonna make a medevac for my ghost. I'm getting cloak as well. My 2-1 is coming together. And this actually looks like a beautiful attack I'm gonna be able to do. This is not a normal composition you see, like the very early ghost plus mech. But this attack looks brutal. I guess a mass amount of baitings could still wipe me out. But besides that, um, I don't know what he could have made to stop me here. Let's see. I only see drones being built. That's a little bit annoying. I would have liked to see what the army composition is. Wouldn't be surprised if it's just a massive Ling Bane counter attack as well. Let's see what's going on here. He does have a lot of gases, so I'm happy that I made those turrets. I'm just going to siege these one by one. Maybe I should just go into this base right away. Let's see. Yeah, he's making a lot of Banes. I'll just siege all my tanks here to hold the fort. Keep a few Hellbats. And I'll just kind of chase these down. Oh, it is actually Mutalisk. Okay. That's a very good call. I'm going to make a few Thors then. Going to keep these here as well. Okay. Need to be careful for this. I do have Cloak, by the way. Yeah, he's trying to go with all the Bailings. But, uh, you know, just not enough firepower against the tanks. And there we go. This was actually a very enjoyable game, guys. The Ghost, I feel like usually it looks a little bit tricky. Like, the first game is a lot of time what it ends up being. The attack doesn't quite do it. And you're trying to climb back. This game, I feel like it was all dominance. If you look at the units lost 6k against 12k. Pretty much double. A little bit more than double. That's amazing. I had the cloak here as well. I had 2-1 perfectly. I don't know how this timing worked out so well. This build actually looks kind of sick. I mean... A max Roach Ravager army would be good against this, which is what you normally play against. Do not be mistaken. I don't think I found something god here. But I find it very satisfying that the timer worked out so well. Just enough tanks to kill the Bailings. Goes for the anti-air. Cloak finishing. 2-1 finishing. Making for a very strong army. Wiping this Chinese Prozerk off the map. And now our next opponent is going to be Max Max. The best Protoss in Europe. Some say in the world. Are we going to be able to beat him with Ghosts? Probably not. But I'm going to try my best. We've performed miracles before like last week. So let's go. First map is Babylon against potentially world's best Protoss. Now, there's one thing very unfortunate about playing on these maps, uh, or on this map in particular, is I couldn't quite tell from the map preview, but I have one really cool ghost build. If there's any Ghost Secret Master lovers out there, you will know the build I'm talking about. Uh, and it's flying the barracks in the main and making a tech lab. But as you can see, there is just no space to do that at all. And I really hope the second map does have space because I would love to do that build. I know against a player the cal caliber of max packs is a good chance it'll fail, but how beautiful would it be if it didn't fail, right? Now what I'm gonna do here, is I want to try to figure out a really new, cool, fast ghost timing. I'm not sure if something like that could work, but what I have in mind is playing a more standard Raven 3-Rex kind of opener and then make super fast ghost and just hit like an extra hard push before my opponent can get settled with a bunch of Colossi. I do have to say, Max Pax recently seems to have evolved a bit, like he plays a lot more cheesy. And I kind of need to also survive the early game while still going for that attack fast enough. And finding that balance is going to be very, very difficult. Max Pax is an absolute slayer. Let me tell you guys, he really loves to keep and kill people within like five minutes. And now one thing that's fortunate, this map doesn't seem amazing for Forgate Blink. Which is one of his most liked builds. At least back when I was still, still a pro, he really loved doing that. Um, and that's going to be a little bit weaker on that map, so that's nice. Now the probe hasn't done too much damage yet, which is alright. I mean, it really shouldn't, so it's not like it's something to be proud of. There we go, I'm gonna escape with my life barely. Sometimes the probe seems to have a little bit of newfound range attack, and this, this time it wasn't the case, which is glad. I've definitely lost the uh, SUVs to a probe, just like taking a sniper rifle. <laughs> or more like an electro machine, like a zapper or something. Now he's trying to delay my CC. Ooh, that probe could have died too. That would have been a really good start here, not gonna happen unfortunately. Oh, it's a low ground gate. Seems to be a normal expansion here. Nothing too crazy yet. Try to send my Reaper across. And what kind of open do I want to do? I know I want to do a Raven 3 ranks. But you can get there in multiple ways. I can go for a Raven instantly. It seems like the, the units are a bit conflicted which path to take, right? Do you guys see that? It was the same with the SUV. I tried to click it in the main and the natural. And even though an SCP can't even jump up, it also was a little bit awkward with that. Oh, he's, he's trying to send his units across. I'm actually going to make um, a second marine here before the reactor. Just for this. I'm trying to do a little bit of kiting on this adept. Get some extra damage in. Ooh, he did get one hit off and I missed the final hit myself, which sucks. I'm just going to keep making marines here. I need to get back with my reaper in time. And I may recognize this by the fact that there's a battery there. Like, you can tell he wants to... Ooh, he might lose that adept now. 
Let's see. Am I gonna be... My Reaper is just a little bit too far, sadly. He's taking a lot of damage on that. Let's go. I think we got the Adept Cash. Yeah, great start. Okay. I still need to get the Scout off on his base. Like, this is not... Um, a very safe situation yet just because I don't know what the tech is there we go he's gonna try to come in again taking even more damage on that adept or well taking damage on the adept once again I guess I should say let's trade this gas I'm making a heli in here so I can scout I'm mostly scared of play against phoenixes I find phoenixes a little bit more complicated to deal with uh, when I'm trying to be the aggressor in particular let's try to get this heli in out as well I don't think he's gonna finish that he would be crazy there we go. Reaper is getting to jump into the main, which is nice. And okay, it is a more standard Twilight opening. Uh, I guess I'm just going to go for the Raven right away. I'm going to get a third gas as well. There we go. This was accidentally blocked. Okay, the Adept is already back home. Can probably save this, which is nice. I'm not quite sure if we're being 4-gate blinked or not. I would really have to scout the natural as well for that. Maybe I can use the Reaper for it again. Kind of take this path over here. And then get into the natural, see how many gases there are. See if we can find any extra gateways laying around for the most part. Get my tank going down here. Okay. There's an adept there. Might not be able to block me. Okay, so the robo is pretty late. This means he has expanded by now. There should be a third base right over there. Or the one in the middle, actually. I'm not quite sure which base uh, people like to take here. Oh, I did forget that my raven builds very fast. That is nice. I guess I'll just build... Uh... <laughs> I love the new patch, guys. Guess I'll just make... Ooh, okay. Now he's going to see I'm doing a raven 3 rack. This is actually pretty good for us. Because he's not going to think anything special is coming. Well, in reality... Um, you know, I'm gonna go for a little bit of a weird ghost attack. Now, when exactly am I gonna be able to do this? I still need to get an eBay. I wanna get a fourth barracks for this, actually, else it doesn't hit quite hard enough. This raven can probably send it across. Um, it's the best way to use it these days. I did only make one tank. I actually wanted to make two tanks. That's uh, a mistake by me for sure. Or not necessarily a mistake, it's just not what I intended to do. Because against Max Pack, someone that's aggressive... If he blinks 8 Stalkers in my main, I do not have a tank. Uh, I'm gonna be sad. And you guys don't wanna see me sad, so I guess that is a mistake in the end. Now my eBay is up. Let's get plus 1 going. Get a reactor on this as well. I'm struggling to afford all the things, mainly because I made that gas so early. But I just wasn't sure if we could afford... Um, yeah, he's still going for an attack. Oh man, I guess I missed the extra gateways here. Now, he doesn't have enough Stalkers to kill me, um, but it's definitely a bit of a rough start, to say the least. Let's try. Yeah, I must have missed the extra gateway somewhere. Okay. I'll just get a few turrets down. There's actually going to be a lot of damage being dealt here. If I made a second tank, I would feel pretty comfortable here, but I just don't have one. Hmm, the damage was good, but can I actually defend? I just don't think I can. That is Stim that's going down, and I'm sad to say it, guys, but this is most likely not going in the right direction. Still gonna go for that ghost though. I have my Raven alive, which is fantastic. Uh, and I'm actually gonna cancel that combat shield to make Stim because it's, you know, Stim is just way more important, really. Now I have two mines here. He might drop on top. I'm actually gonna send a few units there just in case he does that. And ooh, okay, that was pretty close. That could have died right away. Let's see. Yeah, he realizes he's not going to kill the bunker, so he actually went for the units instead. I, I think he could have killed the bunker, actually. It really looked like he could have, but all right. I mean, I'll take it. If the bunker stays alive, we have a better chance here. This is enough units to defend this, which is great. I did make... Yeah, I did make a forced barracks. I'm not crazy. All right. And this strategy might actually be buffed. Um, oh, that prism almost died. That would have been so beautiful if that prism actually went down. This strategy might have been buffed by the patch uh, because the ghosts are stronger out of the gates uh, how do i explain that change so emp before you had an upgrade for it uh, it was pretty weak before the upgrade and really strong after now the upgrade is removed so it's better before um, and there is no upgrade so now it really sucks i don't have stim because these things are so hard to defend i did i did make combat shield first again oh no yeah i mean is that the game losing mistake? It could be. That's gonna delay my attack by about 80 seconds, I think. And ugh, it's really not my best game ever, guys. And it's showing. I think even though I said we lost before, he gave us some opportunities. Now without Stim, however, it's getting worse and worse here. And I guess I'll just try to drop. Maybe he doesn't... Oh, he does recognize in time. That's a little bit annoying. Would have loved to get some fat hits off there. Gonna get another mind drop in here. And then I'll just hide this one. We can kill that observer. That's pretty nice. There we go. 
and then hide this mind i hope i hope that's not uh, gonna be attacked there but oh man he didn't even have charge yet we would have had such a cool attack but now we're gonna have to wait for another 60 seconds i have one ghost on the way ideally that would be two i do feel like the skirmishes have gone our way but if, if this is a colossus building we're already gonna be in trouble here i'm gonna try to make one more ghost i want this to be a ghost i'll cancel a medevac for it i just want another ghost here and then I'll do another mine drop towards the main. I mean, I feel like we're playing pretty well, like, overall. But there's a lot of small mistakes being made. That is very lucky, seeing I killed the Observer, unless he has another one. He must have another one, else that is just the biggest stroke of luck ever. Oh, I guess it happens, guys. Sometimes I'm the lucky one, so I guess we can't complain about those. He's gonna try to kill them. I hope for him he has an Observer. Yeah, he does have an Observer there. And now my two ghosts are out, and I'll be doing a massive SCV pool. Let's see, I have... Three ghosts and one raven. Okay, the attack looks pretty strong here. I still don't have stim. Nine minutes. Ugh. Horrible, guys. Absolutely horrible. Judging by the amount of gases, there's definitely Colossus being built, by the way, which should theoretically be the end of it. Now, I did kill that prism there, which is very nice. That means I can now actually defend these zealots because it's just a few. Okay, there we go. Where's the Colossus? I haven't seen it yet. The Raven is AFK for some reason. I thought I clicked that on my units. That's a bit unfortunate. So he has the Archons. Okay, let's see. Oh, that's... I lost one of my ghosts. Not, not the worst, actually. But uh, it is still one ghost that I lost. Okay, let's go in here. He does have the battery overcharge, so we're going to have to be careful. I'll drop two turrets in the front. And then I'm going to get my SUVs involved one, once the Widow Mines are gone. There we go. It's a pretty close fight here. But I think the overcharge is doing just enough work to make it happen for him. Gonna be able to kill that Archon over there, which is nice. Oh, man. What I, what I hate about this is... Guys, I'll be honest, guys. I already know I've lost this game. But it does look like I could have won it if it wasn't for all those small mistakes. Making stim on the wrong thing. Uh, or making combat shield over stim even after restarting it. That really brought me back like 60 seconds. And yeah, losing a full medevac with Widow Mines as well. Very unfortunate, but that's how StarCraft is. I made more mistakes than I lost the game. I just hate it because to be honest, when I started the series against Max Packs, having to do ghost strategies, I figured it was going to be way too hard to make happen. But then we got so close to making it happen, I really wish I would. If you look at his supply right now, he only has 12 gateway units, guys. If I hit a minute earlier, if I have four more Widow Mines, uh, if I actually made that extra tank and took way less damage from the Stalkers, I'm not going to lie, I really think this is a win. I do respect Max Pax's skill, of course, but I think looking at the situation of the game and how well I was playing, without those mistakes, and I know it's a lot to ask because mistakes, you just make them, without those mistakes, this would have been a win. So at least it's a little bit of a confidence booster that I know I can still beat players with Max Pax doing meme ghost builds, but now let's focus on game number two. Let's try to get that dub. All right, game number two on Ancient Cistern, and what I spot with my eye, guys is a big main base. Can we do the cheese here? It does look like a perfect map for it, so I'm just gonna go for it instantly. Look at me, guys. I wrote good luck and fun back instantly. So he didn't think I was gonna cheese him. Big brain. Doesn't actually work like that, I think. But it's it's fun to pretend that I just did an absolute genius mind game. But look, guys. There's so much space. Is this gonna be the time when we can make this freaking absolutely stupid ghost cheese work against such a good player like Max Fax? Uh, if you guys are wondering about his MMR, Max Fax is the only 7,000 MMR Protoss, at least on the European server, which is very impressive. So, yeah, if you could make this one work, that would be absolutely amazing. Now... I don't think he's a player that likes walling the Reaper jump spot. But even if he does over here, this should still not be spotted. So that's the dream here. Now, Max Max does know me. He does know I'm a little bit of a joker when it comes to my build order. So, uh, yeah, I think there's a good chance he's going to find this. But let's hope he doesn't. If he does, then so be it, guys. We tried our best. Risk are there to be taken. Sometimes I look like a genius in my YouTube video. Sometimes I look like a baboon. And that's okay. I think you guys like me anyway. Uh, so that's all right. But just the chance of this working would just be insane, right? So I'm going to get my double gas up here. Uh, the problem is Max Packs. He... I mean... People see this the negative way, but I would describe him as a little bit of a robot. I don't mean that in a negative way, but I mean, what I mean with it is he plays the same builds and he really just improves the build over and over. So he's the kind of guy to play the same build like 500 times and every single time it's going to be a little bit better. And that's why I'm afraid doing this against him because th this must have been done to him before. And at some point he just fixed it. So he realized if the proxy reaper doesn't arrive at this time, I'm going to send in uh, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Now, where can I put it perfectly? 
one of this. I'm actually gonna build it like right here. See if it works. I do need to make a factory at home. I don't think I can afford it before the ghost though. Uh, but yeah, I think if anyone, Max Max is gonna be the Protoss that has the solution to this. It's also possible if he's never... This is the, the downside of being like the robotic playstyle kind of player, like I said. If he hasn't played against this before, then he's also just not going to prepare for it. And then it's going to be a really good opener for me. Now, at this point, he probably assumes I'm doing a proxy 1-1-1. Because my factory is also not home. But if he comes back, he will see uh, that there's a factory being built. All right, guys, we are building a ghost in potentially the main base of the best Protoss player in the world. And I'm very curious to see how this is going to work out. He is quite good at microing, I, I do have to admit. So, uh, yeah, that could be a little bit of an issue along the way. But let's see. I don't know what he's expecting at this point. He hasn't seen us yet. I hope I'm not proxying the wrong base on accident because it's been so quiet. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, he does have a battery. Got two probes. Okay, we got two pros out there, which is pretty good. I should have targeted the battery there. Um, I didn't think it was going to finish in time. Oh, I actually got that pro. Wait, you can do that? I just killed... Oh, I can actually kill that. Look, oh my god, that is some sick micro right there. All right, four probes killed so far. It's not the best ever, but I'm about to have another ghosty. And he's going to have to chase this ghost out. And then I can get another attack in. Uh, yeah, the problem is he's going to have a battery overcharge. He's going to probably activate it right away. There you go. Another kill. Okay, I got three more kills there, which is quite good. And now I'm going to go for a little bit of a Hellion drop, I want to say. Um, and I have to fly this barracks away. We got seven kills with that, which is going to put me pretty decent spot economically. Downside, I don't have a command center yet. I would say it was pretty successful. If I got the battery... If I really... Like, the battery was so far. If I thought I was looking at the middle of the mineral line, didn't see it, and I was like, okay, we can just go for this. If I emp the battery right away, that could have been maybe a 10-kill opener, which would have been amazing. Sadly, it wasn't, uh, but it is what it is. Now, I'm just going to fly back in here, because why not? I'm a little bit afraid to die to the counter-attack now, because I'm making Hellions. I'm, I'm really taking as much risk as I possibly can, because I know he's just a really good player, and we're not going to win this one without taking a lot of risks. I think... It, yeah, exactly. All right. That's going to be it, guys. Three Stalkers. We did not have a counter for it. I'm going to try to pull some SCVs. Uh, maybe this go... I'm actually going to start Cloak real quick. This is like my only saving grace. I'm making a Widow Mine, however. So if anything is going to save it... Here we go. Almost a surround there. So I'm just going to make a Ghost inside of his base right now. This Widow Mine is going to be pretty nice to have, of course. He did find me. Okay, Widow Mine is down. I'm going to repair that Hellion. Okay, I mean, he doesn't have anything at home right now. The problem is... He can activate battery overcharge again. And battery over overcharge just ends this build. Um, like, you can't kill a probe with battery overcharge, even with a ghost. And that's very unfortunate. Now, I think he's bringing his stalkers back. Oh, no, he hasn't yet. Oh, he does have a prism already. That's a very good choice by him. I do not have an armory, so that's not going to help me out that much. Let's see what he has available here to deal with the ghost. And he's probably just going to activate the overcharge again. Oh, doesn't actually have an overcharge available. So we're killing a lot of probes here. That is already six probes going down. And now I have a bunch of Hellions. Like that dying is okay because I know I can only win this game if I kill like all the probes. I mean, at this point, it does look like it's obviously spoiled, but you never know. Maybe you can get him down to as little probes as possible. That's like a little fun uh, side challenge, I suppose. We're doing a little bit of an EMP there. Distracting those units. And now we're going to go for it with all the SCVs surrounding the uh, Stalkers. Let's burrow that Widow Mine. Okay, the Widow Mine is going to shoot at the prison, which is nice. There we go. My Medivic is going to come out, actually, guys. Okay. Going to get a little probes. Lift these into the main. Come here, please. Oh, no. He had two extra Stalkers. I thought those were the ones that came from the main base. But he actually warped two extras. Didn't realize it in all the chaos. And that's going to be it. But this game was really fun. Obviously, the first game could have been a win. This game, maybe not really. Maybe if I EMP the battery, do a little bit less of a greedy follow-up by going for a Hellion drop. Making a tech lab instead. Going for a tank and a Viking. I think there's actually potential here. This build looked awesome. You could totally try this build on this map. Look, guys. I didn't even do it to the maximum potential and I caught up an SUV. So remember, Protoss usually is up 8 SUV. So 23 against 21 is really good. If here, I go for a CC at home. Uh, and kill three more pros by EMPing the battery. That actually looks like a pretty good position for me and very winnable. Obviously, against an aggressive gold like Max Packs, it would have been hard. But this is a strategy you can try. This map has so much space. It's definitely going to be possible. Maybe after this video, Protoss players will, you know, build a file on there to check for it. But it was very fun. Hope you guys had a good time. This was me trying to make ghosts every game in the $400 tournament. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll see y'all for the next one. Adios.